Good morning and welcome to Portage First United Methodist Church. We're happy to be here this morning on this All Saints Day. This also happens to be the 185th anniversary of our church. We've, had, we've been at this location for 185 plus years, and so we'd like to welcome all of you uh, here to worship with us this morning. A few announcements before we begin. Uh, first of all, we'd like to talk to you about our um, wonderful community meals that have been taking place on Wednesday night. This message is from, uh, from Deb uh, Rosell. What an amazing community friendship meal this week. Over 100 meals served. A special thank you to all who volunteered and a shout out to all who provided. It was, it was used down to the very last drops. This week, we are asking for donations of desserts. The menu is hamburger, a uh, potato of some kind, either french fries or tater chops, uh, baked beans, and dessert. All are welcome, the meal is free, but if you're so inclined to give, we won't say no. So uh, with that in mind, we also remember the altar flowers today were given in memory of Dwayne Finney uh, by, her, by uh, Dwayne's uh, wife, Lois Finney, also in honor of Madeline Lorenz from her husband, Chuck. The gold can offering today is for the Portage Food Pantry, and with these things in mind, why don't we begin our worship this morning? Um, yeah. Joined with my life, 
For our mission moment today, a word from our local food pantry, and these were written for us by uh, Margie Hamstrom. Since late March, volunteers have been handing clients boxes of food in a drive through setting instead of allowing them to come inside and choose their own items. From early spring through June, the pantry was serving anyone without proof of need or residency. Though clients can still come once a week instead of once a month as they, want, as they did pre-COVID, we now have to have trustee approval for both income and township residency. Because of the generosity of our community, the pantry is still on a stable financial footing. In addition to a continued outpouring of support from local churches and organizations, we received a substantial amount of food provided through the CARES Act mu for much of the summer. And homegrown produce came in in loads, just like in past summers. All of this is good news, though it does have to be tempered by the fact that we are serving clients weekly instead of once a month as we did pre-COVID. Pre Bobby DeCamper, the pantry director, was excited by a worship committee suggestion that we focus on giving peanut butter and cereal for the rest of the year. For whatever, but whatever you feel like leaving in the grocery cart is much appreciated and will certainly be used. Thank you so much for all of your great support.
It's knowing he's there through the sun and the rain. It's when you believe it before you can see it. Then you can walk on because he's making a way. You've got to have some faith, faith. You've got to have some shadows he's hope for tomorrow he'll always be there through the sun and the rain you gotta believe it before you can see it then you can walk on cause he's making a way you gotta have some Well, we've come to the special holiday of All Saints Day when we remember those who have finished their course in faith for another year. Grace and peace to you from God, who was and is and is to come. On this holy day, All Saints Day, we celebrate and remember those who have died and now rest from their labor. These treasured saints have become inheritors of the promises of God. And today, we remember that though we mourn their loss, we find joy in their continued life through Jesus Christ. Today, we light these candles and we honor the memory of these church members. Madeline Lorenz. Robert Schoen. Rebecca Ingle. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. We light these candles in memory and honor of those dear to us that have passed in the last year. Though unconnected to our local church, we bear testimony to their eternal life in Jesus Christ. Troy Packard. Larry Bruce. Bonnie Reeder. Brenda Sue Brookheimer, Edna Elzine Johnson, William Rebeck, Daryl Jacob Veter, Penny Sue Maybe. Curtis Waffler. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Finally, we light the large candle in honor and memory of all the saints who through the years have left the church militant and have joined the church triumphant. For all the saints who from their labors rest, we give thanks. These so named here before us, who are they and where did they come from? These are they who have come out of great tribulations. They have washed their rocks and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve God day and night in God his temple. God who sits on the throne will shelter them with divine presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst, the sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. Jesus will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe every, away every tear from their eyes. May light perpetual shine down upon them. 
Amen. May they rest in continued peace. Amen. May we follow them in the way of faith in Jesus Christ and all God's people said. Amen. Hear now the words of our scripture this morning from St. John's Gospel, chapter 5. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew Bethsaida, with a, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man who was there, who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into this pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat, and he began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is not the Sabbath, it is not law for, lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made, had, who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take, up, take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed didn't know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told Jesus that it was told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered, My father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his Father, thereby making himself equal to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, this morning, we are very honored to have with us our conference superintendent here in the North District, uh, Dr. Uh, Reverend uh, Sunita Mako. Welcome, sir. We're happy to have you here this morning to bring God's word to us. God, thank you. Freedom. This is freedom from the mask. <laughs> Sometimes when you stay in this mask for a long time, it makes you get a little bit lost. But I am so glad that I'm here at the portage. Uh, is this good afternoon or good morning? It's still morning. <laughs> Difference within the district, we have Eastern time, Central time, still learning about the timing. But I'm so glad that you are here today. I'm so thankful for you, for the gift and blessings that God has showered upon you to create time to come and fellowship with us. And even those who are watching, uh, my, my prayer is that you feel the presence of the Lord today. You feel God ministering to your heart, to your soul, as we continue in this service. The scripture has been read to us, but before I get into this scripture, I want us to take a little bit uh, processing here. And uh, the way we start processing is asking ourselves, where are we? Where have we come from? And where are we headed? Sometimes it's very difficult to really start digging deeper to where we have come from more than nine months. I don't want to take you 10, 20 years. The past nine months. And then where we are today until next Tuesday. And then where we will be going forward. If you don't know what is happening next Tuesday, you can go, go find some information. But there's, there's a lot that has happened. And we need to acknowledge that a lot has happened that has changed us in many ways, has changed who we are in many ways. And the truth be told, we are not the same. And we are not going to be the same. What does that mean? Something has changed in us. And until we claim what is that that has changed in us, then we'll be ignoring the real fact that we have been changed. So today my theme talks about what is the question? That's really the theme. What is the question? 
And why am I bringing, what is the question? This will come from the scripture that was read to us from John chapter 5, verse 1 to 18. What is the question? And there, this theme comes because when I was reading this scripture and as I was processing, as I was preparing myself, it kept coming back to me. What was the question that Jesus asked this paralyzed person? But let us reflect what our fears are. We have all fears and concerns. So let us go back to 2019 December. What was America like? What was Indiana like? What was Portage like? What were the fears? So there's research that was done by Pew Research from the U.S. Uh, politics and policy, and they identified a number of things that issues that people were worried about. And the first one before COVID-19, the first one that people were concerned about is affordability of health care. People were so much worried about how they can afford to take care of their health. Number two, it was drug addictions. That was what was identified that people were worried about in our country. And then number three was affordability of college education. So people were worried, will we be able to take our children or grandchildren, or will we be able to go back to college and further our studies? And then number four, number five, I mean number four was federal deficit. So people were worried about our federal resources. And number five was racism. So I, I, I want you to follow me as we look at what has happened from January to November that has shifted the concerns that many people have. So I was looking at Gallup. Gallup was uh, research. They, they came up with new outline of things, issues that people are worried about. And the first one for Gallup was economics. People are worried about their economic resources. They are worried about what they have, what they may need as they take care of themselves. People are even changing their decisions of either they were planning to retire or they were planning to make decisions about selling their homes or buying a home or buying some property. This has changed how people process. So economics is identified to be the big concern that people have. Number two is coronavirus, COVID-19. That has hit many people. And people are worried about what does life mean now and what is it going to look like moving forward? Coronavirus. Number three, people are worried about the government. They are worried about who are we? What's our government like? What's the purpose of our government? And how do we add value into this government? What's our obligation in this process? People are still digging deep into trying to find out what is our government like. And number four is race relationships or racism. So the, the before COVID-19, racism was number five. Now racism has come up. Again, remember a number of violent things that have happened. I was so blessed to hear pastor indicate that they are doing classes here by Zoom uh, to dismantling uh, racism, uh, which is great. You guys, you are stepping up to l learn and read and look at ways you can add value in people's lives, really. This is about adding value to some other people's lives. In your own lives, many generations to come. It's making this community a better place. And then the last one that has come up from Gallup talks about polarization. It seems like there are two tensions that are struggling, trying to fight through the messiness of what has happened. With coronavirus coming and everything changing, we feel like there's more tension that is happening. But amidst all these, we still have life to live. <laughs> that's, that's one thing I want to remind you. <laughs> you still have life to live. You are not going to throw yourself out of this. This is part of our package. And being part of our package, we have to learn on ways to enter into that deeper, deeper question. And what was our question? The, the question clearly was, do you want to get well? 
Now, I take this question that Jesus has asked a paralytic person, and I bring it to our context and say, what is the question that God is asking me? He's asking you, do you want to get well? There's no way you can answer this question if you don't know your illness. You have to know your illness. You have to know the area that needs to get well. But the scripture tells us that when Jesus was followed by a multitude of people, Jesus came to this place called Bethsaida or Bethesda, the house of mercy, a place whereby the lame, the blind, the paralyzed would come. And it was a pool that had four, we, we, we hear it's, it's four colonnades or four you, the scripture you read taught, did not say colonnades, but it, five, not four, five colonnades that were in this pool. And all these lame, blind people would come every day. They would come and wait for the water to be stirred. Other scholars have indi indicated the angel would come once and start the water. And whoever jumps into this water, the first one to jump in the water, God healed. And this guy who had been paralyzed for 38 years, we are told 38 years he had been paralyzed, was coming there and had not gotten a chance to get into the pool so that he would receive healing. One thing we don't know is whether he had come there for all those years. Probably not. But it seems like he had really tried several times based on how he responded to the question. And the question Jesus, when Jesus came and looked at him and, and asked him this question, do you want to get well? Do you want to be healed? This, this, this man looked at Jesus and said, sir, the reason why I'm not healed is because any time the water gets stirred, I don't have anyone to throw me into the water so that I can receive healing. That's not the question Jesus asked this man. Do you want to get well? The question that this man was trying to answer was, what, why is it that you have not been healed? Started giving reasons. Do you want to get well? And friends, as we talk, I want us to take a moment to ask ourselves how many times we feel like we are a little bit distanced from holding ourselves accountable, responsible, or sometimes we develop this thing called the dependence syndrome, which puts us, puts us in, a, in a position of helplessness. Sometimes when you are in a position of dependency, you don't uh, step up to be responsible, to take hold of your responsibility. Sometimes it's very easy to feel like you are beaten, you are lost, and you don't have anything to add to make a difference. This man, for 38 years, clearly tells Jesus the reason why he had not been healed. But Jesus did not look at him and say, you are crazy, you did not answer my question, I'm going to leave you here, continue suffering. <laughs> Jesus did not tell him that. Jesus looked at him and I'm sure Jesus said, my son, Jesus looked at him and they said, stand up, take your bed, take your mat, and they walk and go. Jesus' is mercy and grace and love and forgiveness is so generous that Jesus looked at this man and said, stand up and take your bed, take your mat and go. And this guy stood up and they started walking. And I, 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 we don't have details where they looked around and said, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Hello, hallelujah, thank you. Probably that happened, but there's no way it was recorded in the script. I'm sure there was a certain kind of excitement that happened to this man. But as this man was walking, and I'm sure excited, the Jews, people of the law, people who keep the Sabbath, looked at him and they started criticizing him for carrying his mat. Can you imagine that? Of all things, seriously, 38 years you have been dis disabled and you have been paralyzed. You have never walked. 
And Jesus has done this miracle of healing. Now you should be walking and praising God and people around you should look at you and say, congratulations. We are so thankful that you can join our club. We can walk together. And, and they are looking at him and they are saying, what's wrong with you today is a Sabbath. You should not be carrying things. So Sabbath day, you are not supposed to carry things. If you carried your Bible to the church today, you shouldn't be even carrying the Bible if you want to keep the law. And these people are criticizing this guy who had suffered for 38 years. You know, every time I think of what was going on with this man, I see it happen to us all the time. Sometimes when you choose to follow Christ Jesus, sometimes when you do things, you go to church, you worship, you sing, you tell people some miracles that have happened in your life, some people may not make sense out of it. What gives you that excitement? But when you have the joy of Jesus Christ inside you, it is just so good. People who are not in that world will not understand it. And this Jews, the people who are criticizing, did not see the importance of being healed. This guy would have chosen to continue staying there and uh, be just sitting and saying, I don't have anyone to throw me to the water. This is going to be my excuse so that I can stay here. And you know, there are many people who have chosen to have different excuses why things are not happening the, the way they should be happening. You hear it a lot in our politics. Have you had politicians talk? Maybe I'm the only one who has heard about politicians talk. If you have never heard, I would encourage you to go and listen sometimes the way they talk. They have to blame someone. You have to blame someone so that your name will look good. They're sad. No one wants to be responsible to hold in and say, yes, I know this we, I, I have messed up, or we have messed up in some ways. We need to be forgiven, and we need to be given a chance. We need to be given a chance. It's like everyone wants to be Mr. And Mrs. Perfect, holier than thou. The other is the bad. What is the question that Jesus is asking you? What's the question that Jesus is asking our United States of America? Do we want to get well? And how do we get well if we don't know our illness? We need to know our problem. And if we continue pushing our problems is someone else, then we are not going to get well. You have something you bring to this Portage community. And I count on you. I thank God for your pastor. This great man, I thank God for his faithfulness, his continued love for you, his continued support. I pray for you. I pray for him. I pray that you guys, you become a great testimony in this corner of Northwest Indiana. You become a story that really tells a true story, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. We can only do that when we open our doors and say, no one is perfect. We have failed, and God's grace has remained sufficient and his mercy and forgiveness and love has continued to overflow in our lives. And because this is not ours, we are going to share generously with others. Think about how this guy was criticized. And as he continued going around, Jesus a few days later meets him in the temple and, and finds this guy and says, Oh, you are the one that I healed. And Jesus tells him, See no more. Do not sin. And he's telling him, You know, if you sin, something terrible may happen to you than what you had experienced before. Jesus is reminding him that remember where you came from. Today, all since day, we were looking at people who have given their lives in faith until they went to glory. We thank God for them. At some point, you and I will reach a point whereby we will be remembered. The question is, how do I want to be remembered? How do I want to be remembered in this church or in this community? What is the question? Do you want to get well? You came here today. I don't know what you carried with you when you came here. With all the concerns we have, we have a lot. But I'm praying that anything that you are carrying and you feel this so heavy on you, Jesus is stretching his hand and saying, bring to me my son, my daughter. I am here for you. 
the scripture is very clear. In fact, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the steps with the wicked, or one who stands in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. Blessed is one who has known where you have come from, where you are, and where you are going. You can't come to church and be the same all the time. You have to make a step of moving a little bit towards something better, a version that God has always intended you to be. And the scripture reminds us that those who have identified what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ should be able to identify which groups you belong to. You should be able to know what needs to come from your mouth, what behaviors we need to promote. Clearly, it tells us when you have become a believer and you have answered this question, do you want to be well? You're able to say, yes, Lord, I want to be well. I know I've caused problems in my neighborhood. I've been throwing leaves, dry leaves to my neighbor. I want to stop this behavior. I don't know whether you do that. There are some people like messing up their neighbors. Oh, you have a boss in work who is driving you nuts, driving you crazy. And sometimes you don't know what you can do. Or sometimes you feel like you have been isolated or marginalized. You have been left out because of who you are. But Jesus is saying, you are all my children, redeemed by the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. How was it to step and say, Jesus, here we are. Help us. My prayer for each one of us is to listen to the challenges that we have in our community. We have many people who are described in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 to 4. It's really talking about the kind of generation we live in. And every time I read this scripture from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 to 4, it says, people will be lovers of themselves. People will be lovers, they love themselves. Love us of money. Does that sound familiar in our neighborhood? <laughs> do you know there are people who will do anything as long as they want the money? Or they want to enrich themselves and forget to remember who has provided all this money for them? They will be boasting, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, people who are unholy without any love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pl pleasure rather than lovers of God. We have this kind of people in our community. What is the question that Jesus is asking you? If you cannot remember anything I've said today, just remember that as you go around and say, what are you asking me to, be, to do in my neighborhood? And I pray for you, each one of you, there's something you can answer to solve our problems. Brothers and sisters, I cannot thank God enough how much I value your presence here today. There are moments you feel like, oh my goodness, we need something more to happen. But what you have is what you have. And what you have is what you need to be thankful for. And they say, Lord, the little that I have, the few people we have, the few resources we have is what we are going to use to bring transformation in our communities. My prayer for you is to step up to make a difference. On Tuesday, some of you already have stepped up to make this community a better place and I'm sure you have already made decisions some of you, you are going to make decisions on Tuesday when you go there don't go there with a very selfish agenda because sometimes when we go there we go because we hate someone else we go because we have a, 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 a anger associated with our decisions that we make how I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you when you go there. You don't carry all this anger and frustration. Go there and ask God to give you wisdom on the decision that you make. We like it or not, we are going to have a president for the next four years again. We have a president. And ours is to work with whoever that uh, comes into their office so that we can add value into our communities. We don't have perfect people out there. 
If you thought that we have perfect people, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> we are going to have, whoever we have may have a lot of issues to deal with. What is your responsibility? You start by changing portage. You start portage, Indiana, and other places to make this world a better place by answering the question, do you want to get well? I pray for you. Pray for me that we can add value into our communities rather than causing more tension, hitting each other, calling each other names, fighting and laboring. If we can get out of that and get out of social media with all the things we put there that sometimes cause us headache, if we can get out of this social media of things that cause us have headache and say, Lord, help us to be accountable and responsible in making our communities better. Whatever it takes, with God's help, we are on the same page of making a difference for Jesus in our communities. God bless you. May God guide you. Let us be accountable, be responsible, and let us get out of dependence syndrome so that we can move the needle for Jesus, adding more disciples of Jesus Christ who make transformation in our communities. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, help us. With all that is happening, sometimes we feel so confused. And sometimes we feel so frustrated. But Lord, you have reminded us that uh, you are there with us, even through these challenges that we face. You have reminded us uh, that we have a responsibility of answering this question. Do we want to get well? Yes, indeed, Lord, we want to get well. And you are going to use us to add value into making our communities better every day. So I pray for this church. Pray for these members. Pray for their pastor. Pray for these community and leaders and the cities and all the people who make this community continue to be great. I pray that, Lord, making our community a better place for you, where your name is glorified, where people have jobs, where people love each other and they don't hate each other, it will take your hand, Lord. How us is to invite you to say, yes, Lord, come and redeem us from this messiness. So help us and walk with us today. In Jesus' precious name, our Lord and our Savior, we pray and give thanks. Amen. God bless you. Wake up. As we move into our time of offering today, we're going to take a special moment to pray for uh, Sunita and for Sunita Mako and for the rest of the cabinet. But this is a moment where we can offer ourselves, not only ourselves, but our gifts to God, and a moment of, of quiet and, and personal reflection. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for, for Sunita and for his message to us today. We recognize his responsibility for so many churches throughout our district. Literally hundreds of churches and hundreds of Christian people um, look to, to this man for her leadership. We know that the district office is in a bit of transition as they, trans as they transition to a new administrative assistant. We wish God's blessing upon Jan Fager as she uh, moves on from her, from her previous position to her new one. And we pray for the new secretary, um, the new administrative assistant, whomever they are, asking that your spirit will be with them. We pray now for all of our, for our bishop and our district superintendents. We know that the time that we live in has been unprecedented and that they are being called upon, as we all are, to, to rethink and re remake ministry in the United Methodist Church um, to help deal with um, the current crisis, crises. There are, there's more than one. Um, God, we pray uh, that you give them wisdom and strength and gentleness and kindness and self-control. We pray all these things through Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. This next hymn is not a contemporary hymn, but the words are so perfect for our century. Thank you. 
time has now come that we should share in a service of holy communion, which we do not only with the saints before us, but the saints in heaven who live in light. If you'll please take your cup, and on the bottom you'll notice that there's a small host cracker. If you'll open that, remove the biscuit, and, and hold it in your hands like so. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you will open the other side of the cup and again hold it just like so. After the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to the Father, and from the vine from which, it's came, from which it came, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one in ministry to all the world until we feast at Christ's heavenly banquet. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now may you be blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth from this place in peace, proclaiming the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Searching for purpose in all the waiting, praying through so many silent hours, finding a breath when you feel like fading, learning to love where you are right now. You've got to have faith. Remember the memorials for all your tomorrows. It's knowing he's there through the sun and the rain. It's when you believe it, before you can see it, then you can walk on, cause he's making a way. You gotta have some faith, faith, you gotta have some faith, faith. I've done that already, so oh, we're done. Okay. Well, <laughs> have a wonderful week. <laughs>